this is to show how to use this new tensioning setup that I made. You're going to print this at 55% infill with three perimeters. And um, you want, it needs to be exact. So you want four bottom, four top, 55% infill, three perimeters. Very important. Then you're going to set this. It's better to just home it. And you're going to make sure to put this in the center. And this needs to be, that needs to sit level. So I'm slightly, slightly too tight right there. And I want to show you guys something. See that's, that's the 31% infill. I just want to show how much of a difference that makes it being off. Tiny bit. So anyway. This needs to be centered from pulley to pulley. So if it's a stock boron, there's a or a boron or a trudon, there's a pulley here, so it would be back a little bit further. And what I want to make sure everyone realizes is it doesn't matter which side. If you loosen this side, it's going to affect that side. That's how exact this is. Like the uh, this little bit of turn, lose that. So, next step at this point is going to be you are going to loosen the bottom of your X mounts. So you loosen these a tiny bit. And remember, things should not be too tight. If you're using regular drivers, don't even, you shouldn't have to turn them, turn it the long ways for more leverage. You should be able to do it all like this, not like that. If you're going like this, it's too much strength for a 3D printer. Anyway, so you loosen that, and then you pull forward, and you make sure that they're hitting at the same time. So to give an example, I'm going to throw this way out. So I'm going to loosen one turn on each, which you would think isn't much. But I want you to see what it actually does. So that makes it so this has that much more room when this side's touching. And the next is that one turn did that. I'm going to go back my one turn tight, which I know is a good setting. And remember, when you're adjusting, you always got to adjust top and bottom. So whatever you do to one, do that to the other. And now if your pulley is riding on a shoulder, you need to fix that. So I'm more towards the top, which means I either need to loosen the bottom a little bit or tighten the top a little. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to tighten the top just a tiny bit. Eighth of a turn. Doesn't take much. And there we go. That got it off the, off the shoulder. And all we care about is that it's not pushing on the shoulder real hard. I could use to go even a little more. So now I'm going to come out an eighth of a turn on the bottom. That's pretty much perfect. So now let's double check our tension. Once again we center this. Push all the way to the back. Throw a tensioner on center. And that is beautiful. So now at this point, first step is tighten this.
Now we also have the luxury, since we have the slotted design, that if we're just worried about distance, we can just loosen these. At this point, come back here and loosen these just like a half a turn. Top and bottom. You get it like that and now push back and forth. It should be easier to push forward and back than it is to go side to side because you're turning more pulleys when you go side to side than forward and back. Make sure you didn't push that back right corner down when you did all that. It's normal for it to take a few passes on a cold start, especially since we were just moving stuff around. Now, it should be fine, but just for the hell of it, you take one pass all the way forward. Then one pass all the way back, raise it up, and tighten. But now, you should notice, you can press M84, and it should be way, way easier. And then at this point, it's a good idea to redo your input shaping, which, uh, if you have my kit, you literally just plug your accelerometer into the little plug which hopefully you left sticking up. Mine isn't sticking up right now because I probably dropped it down there on one of my uh... yep I did it's right there so it's always good to just leave that sticking up a little bit like right there and this way you plug in your accelerometer if you have the upgraded gantry, you just use these screw holes. Just make sure you don't hit any ICs or anything. Like I honestly just use one because you don't need to two, two. As long as it's not diagonal, it doesn't matter which way it's facing. You don't need to match the axes. And then you literally type in shaper underscore calibrate, which there's plenty of guides on that. I'll probably make a much more detailed guide in that. You let it do its thing, and then you press save config when it's done.